And welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time to talk about something remarkable that occurred today in history, June 8th, 1998. And it was about the death of uh, former Nigerian leader, uh, Sani Abacha. Uh, Sani Abacha's um, death was shrouded in controversy because while some say he died of a heart attack, others say he was poisoned. But we would never know because an autopsy was never you know, carried out. Ultimately, he died. He was buried um, the same day, you know, according to Muslim rights. But when we look at the life of Sani Abacha, it's, it's something that we really can't miss. You know, when we look at all... all all his contribution to the military overthrow, how he helped, you know, certain military rulers, you know, take over power in, in Nigeria, how he banned, uh, you know, banned the control of the press, just basically did lots of things, especially, you know, the most remarkable was his loot. He, when he was uh, head of state in the country, uh, we know that Abacha was notorious for corruption because he would use the guise of, you know, security to get money from, from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Um, the facts are that he would get this money mostly in cash, mostly in, do um, in dollars, buy the truckloads to his house, send them to the Swiss bank accounts where he stashed them, but he, he never lived long enough to, you know, spend all that money. But um, other things that he was, you know, known for was his human rights abuses and how he... Um, popularly, the popular killing of um, Ken Tarua and other uh, nine environmental activists from Ugoni, you know, because of that incident and many other human rights abuses, the uh, Commonwealth suspended Nigeria um, when that occurred in 1995. He had fought in the Nigerian army. He was the first Nigerian army officer to attain the rank of a full general without skipping any, any stage. He, his rule was characterized by fear, isolated bombings. You know, when you talk about the name Sani Abacha, many people still you know, think about that with, with horror in their heart. So basically, he died on this day in history. He left um, 10 children behind. And um, yes, that's it for today in history. A couple of days ago, we spoke about the death of Kudra Atabiola. Um, mm -hmm. It was also in Abacha times where, you know, that she was murdered. Um, some names became very popular back then in Nigeria. Hamza Al-Mustafa and Sergeant Rogers and a couple other people. Um, you spoke all, already about Ken Sarawiwa. Um, there's also the General Oladipo Dia Angle, um, whose life was hanging by a thread before this moment, actually, before this day happened. Um, I remember I was a little, I was a boy, of course I was a boy. I was a little kid on you know, my way back from school, or after, I think it was after school, you know, that day, um, when the news broke that um, Senebacha was dead. And, and you know, it, it's a situation where, you know, a country should be thrown into mourning was instead a country thrown into celebration. It, you know, it was pretty much similar to when Nigeria won the Olympics uh, uh, gold in football in 1996. Um, that's how much celebration, you know, happened across Nigeria, you know, for the next couple of days. It felt like we had won, won the World Cup or we had won something totally huge or, you know, when Agbani Darigo won this world. Um, so, you know, that's sadly how it is when you have leaders whose rule and whose, you know, time in, in that office is characterized with, with tyranny and dictatorship and all of that. And corruption. I mean, take and a look corruption. at the, the, the amount of money that he, he siphoned. M millions and millions of dollars, you know, still, yeah. still being perpetrated. You know, remember in 2018, the government had said there was going to be a national social safety net, that all the money stolen by Abacha would be distributed to poor people. They'll be getting 5,000 Naira every month. Um, I, I don't know how that ended, but, you know, different countries, especially Switzerland, you know, paying back millions and millions of dollars that were stolen by Abacha. It's, it's just remarkable, yeah. you know, the level of corruption, really, and how far back this, this, this has been in Nigeria's history. Sickening. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about someone who also died um, in 1998, but in, not in June, but in April, on the 23rd of April. His name is James Earl Ray, and he became popular because he, you know, was uh, found guilty for the murder of Martin Luther King in 1968. It was on this day that he was arrested after fleeing the United States to a couple of other countries. On the 4th of April in 1968, he killed Martin Luther King with, a, of course, a sh single shot fired from his Remington rifle. 
uh, while uh, Martin Luther King was standing in his uh, hotel balcony back then in Memphis, Tennessee. Witnesses saw Ray fleeing a hotel that was um, opposite or across the street from the hotel where um, Martin Luther King was, uh, was uh, standing. He fled to Atlanta and then fled to uh, uh, north uh, to Canada, arrived in Toronto three days later after uh, Martin Luther King was, uh, was killed, and then he hid over there for a month, acquired a Canadian passport under a fake name, Ramon uh, George Snide. He then left Toronto in late May on a flight to England, stayed briefly also in uh, Lisbon, Portugal from England, and then returned back to London. On the 8th of June in 1968, two months after King's death, Ray was arrested at the London Heathrow Airport, attempting to leave the United Kingdom for Brussels. He was trying to depart the United Kingdom uh, for Brussels and then end up somewhere in Africa. Um, back then, uh, people said he was either heading to um, Zimbabwe or um, South Africa. He confessed to the crime on the 10th of March in 1969 on his 41st birthday, and after pleading guilty, he was sentenced to 99 years in prison. Um, on the 10th of June 1977, Ray and six other conv convicts escaped from prison, um, but eventually were recaptured. <laughs> and an extra year was added to his 99-year sentence, which made him, of course, uh, you know, now have to serve 100 years in jail. Um, and, of course, on, you know, on the 23rd of April in 1998, he eventually passed on at the age of 70. But after his uh, guilty um, conviction and, of course, after his confession, a couple of days later, he actually tried to recant that confession and say that, he, you know, he was uh, forced, you know, was convinced to plead guilty by his lawyer. But there was actually a guy called Raul or so who had set him up and made, you know, it seemed like he was the one who fired the shot. Um, he said he knew that the shot was going to be taken or, you know, Martin Luther King was going to be killed, but... He wasn't the one who actually did it, um, but there was no um, lawyers or evidence, you know, that supported that claim. And you know, sat, well, he eventually was convicted of uh, Martin Luther King's murder and was sentenced to 99 years in jail. Mm. So yes, on this day, uh, James Earl Ray was captured um, in uh, London's Heathrow Airport after two months of running um, and you know traveling between countries, and of course after two months of uh, the death of Martin Luther King. Mm. But this, this story still has a lot of holes in it because even though, you know, the U.S. had said this was an open and shut case, they, they caught him, he was sentenced, but he said he was, you know, convinced to plead guilty. He said he, he, he didn't do it. And even the family of Martin Luther King said they believe him, that they believe that Ray was innocent. So we really don't know, you know, the, the facts, the truth, but, you know. Man, but there was, there's, there's no... Um, counterclaims and then you know his claims of some Raul guy you know they didn't hold any water because you know who's Raul how do you, you you need to you need to prove that you're actually right he, he fired his lawyer a few times um, but he still was not able to prove yes there is also that you know a theory and of course the the King family would people not just King family would say oh you know it was done by the FBI you know it was done by the CIA you know and uh, whoever it is that was captured was just the um, the sacrificial lamb that they chose to use um, sadly those you know things may be true or may exist but still he wasn't able to prove his case otherwise and that's it his brother eventually put out a you know a documentary a book a couple of years after he was uh, dead or so um, writing also, also about the death of Martin Luther King but well we probably would never know the truth probably much pretty much the same thing with who killed JFK or how Sanya Bacha really died mm -hmm. we'll never you know, know the truth of some of these things that's all we have for you today in history, 1968 and 1998, James L. Ray and General Sani Abacha. Short break, we're going into a conversation now with a lawyer to tell us more about uh, the Attorney General uh, Malami and the threats to prosecute Nigerians who still are using the microblogging site Twitter. We'll talk about that after the short break. Stay with us. <laughs> 